Here's the Garmin glass cockpit that's available in the R-Series boats, either surf or non-surf. This is how Cobalt sets it up from the factory, where you have your nav maps on the left-hand side, and then your gauges on the right-hand side. For the maps side, you can pinch or pull to zoom in or out, or use the plus and minus. There's going to be certain displays in the corners of the maps, depending upon the options that are selected in the boat. What's nice about this setup is you can create waypoints, set up certain routes that you want to take, set where your home is. If for whatever reason you're off into no man's land, you can't seem to scroll back to the boat, if you touch the screen, the stop panning button will pop up. Go ahead and press that and that'll take you back over center of the boat. In this navigation view, you can go into the menu and change how it's set up and edit the layout. If you want different information, you can go in and get tides and currents. Not all this information is available depending upon the options of the boat. For example, this isn't a sailboat, you're not gonna see wind charts or anything like that. If you've set up waypoints, you can access them in the waypoint menu. If for whatever reason somebody's taken you into a different menu or area that you're not familiar with, Cobalt has set up these presets inside the home menu, go into smart mode and go into cruising, and that'll bring you back to your default view. Same thing over on the right-hand screen where all your gauges are located. RPM gauge, speedometer, boat engine hours, unit voltage and engine voltage to monitor both your batteries, as well as a unit voltage analog gauge, engine temperature, outdrive position, 100% means it's all the way up, or 0% means it's all the way down, oil pressure, and fuel level. There's a couple different views of this screen by cycling the left and right arrows. There's a little blue dot that moves simultaneously with, with them. The first one is the one I recommend to our customers to usually operate with. Again, you have waypoint, info, home, menu, and mark, the same buttons we had on the other screen. If for whatever reason you encounter an emergency situation, you can press the SOS button and select what type of situation or emergency you're either experiencing or witnessing. That signal will go off into Garmin, determine your GPS position and call the appropriate people to come help you out. If your boat is equipped with a surf package, this is also where you can access all the surf controls. Two ways to do it is hitting home, going to smart mode and hitting surfing or go down to the bottom here for AV, gauges, and controls, and go surf control. This is gonna bring up your port, forward, and starboard ballast fills. And in R7 surf, you just have port and starboard and not forward. At the top of the screen, you have a GPS speed, your trim indicator and fuel level. And then a right-hand side is gonna be your surfing preferences, surf left, surf right, hoist trailer, and performance. Surf left and surf right, are self-explanatory. You can surf on the left or right side of the boat. Hoist trailer mode. If you have all the ballast, and, excuse me, if all the ballast tanks are full, your trim tabs are deployed, and your outdrive is up, it'll go ahead. When you press that, it'll em start emptying your ballast and put your surf tabs away for you. Performance mode is a really cool feature that allows the boat to get up on a plane quicker if your ballast tanks are full. Say, for example, you need to run back to the house or go pick up a friend real quick back at the dock. You can hit performance mode, and instead of waiting for the ballast tanks to empty, go pick up your friend, come back, and then fill them up. Performance mode will, again, help you get on plane quicker, so you can go pick up your friend real quick. As the ballast tanks are filling, you're going to see it go from eighth, half, to full, simply by pressing full or empty for each control. When you're done surfing, you can go ahead and just go back to smart mode and go to cruising, and that will bring back up your gauge view. As we come down below, you have all your nice switches clearly labeled. Here's your bilge blower. Make sure you run your bilge blower four minutes prior to starting the engine. Next to that is your bilge pump. The bilge pump does have a float switch on it. If there is a significant amount of water in the bilge compartment, the bilge pump will automatically turn on. Your interior light switch. These are four standard LED lights in the boat. These help illuminate the floor so you can kind of see where you're stepping in the evening time. Some boats are equipped with the optional docking lights. These are the LED lights off the front of the boat. In non-surf series boats, you can option the boat with a captain's call exhaust system. This is a switchable, loud to quiet exhaust system. Makes your boat kind of sound like a Harley. On the right-hand side is your underwater light switch for boats that are optioned with that particular selection. 
Swim platform lights, again, this is an option. This helps light up the back of the swim platform during the evening time. Last but not least are your navigation lights. When you turn navigation lights on, it'll turn your red and green light on the front and your white all around light on top on. If you are anchored out in the evening time, you may select just your anchor light so your white all around light is illuminated. With this particular boat being the surf package, we have a check surf system light right here. If there's ever a fault with the surf system, that light will illuminate to tell you there's an issue. Just go ahead and contact one of the Seattle boat locations so we can get it fixed for you. If this is a not, if this is a regular R series boat, right here will just be an accessory switch. If you needed lights or something else that needed an on and off switch, we could wire it up to that particular switch. Down here on the left side of the helm is your Rockford Fosgate head unit. This is the standard head unit for all audio systems on new R series boats. Press the source button just for a second and release to get it to turn on. It'll start off whatever station or source you were listening to last. For example, if you turned it off listening to Bluetooth, it'll go back to Bluetooth. To select different sources, just press the source menu and then you can scroll between different sources. If you, for example, if you want to pair it via Bluetooth, you first need to pair your device to the head unit and then you can land on the Bluetooth icon and then just press the knob in to select that particular source. The menu button goes into different menus for whatever source you're listening to, for example, FM menu or Bluetooth menu. Press and holding the menu button will take you into changing up your zones, balance, fader, audio type, that sort of thing. If your boat is optioned with the subwoofer, you can control your subwoofer controls right there. Next track, previous track, player pause. And in some boats, you can change what source of music is being played at played in particular zones. When I move the volume knob, you're going to see that there are several different zones right here, and it's saying all volume currently. If I press and hold the knob in, then I can change just the cockpit volume. If I press and hold again, I'm able to change just the tower volume. Press and hold again, and then I can go into the transom volume, and press and hold again into the bow volume. Again, this will work if your boat is equipped with the Platinum or Premium sound system, and it depends if you have tower speakers or not. Your ignition key, just to the right of that, and above that is your horn. The steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base, so I can tilt the steering wheel up and down. And just to the right of that is my surf control. On our series equipped surf boats, this is where your cruise control is located. You have your on and off button on the right hand side, and then you can change your set speed with the up and down arrows. So the bottom one is your set speed, the top one is your actual speed. Coming over to the throttle, you have your trim switch here, which will raise and lower the outdrive. Your neutral switch right here, which disengages the propellers. This allows our technicians to either raise or lower your engine RPMs to help heat up the fluids when we're servicing the boat. Your safety lanyard, make sure that this is connected to you if you're out in rough water. If this pulls out, the engine will shut off. Make sure that this is in place in order to start the engine. On the back side of the throttle are a couple other buttons. You have trim assist, cruise, tow, minus, and plus. Trim assist is an auto assist feature for your outdrive. It'll help raise or lower the outdrive if you're just cruising along. It just depends on how fast you're going. The cruise button enables your plus and minus button on the throttle. I could either speed up the boat by pressing plus or slow it down by pressing minus. For example, you can't actually go full speed just from idle. So if I was at idle, just like that, I can't press plus and go all the way up to full speed. It's only gonna allow me a certain range of operation. The tow feature up from that is a software upgrade for those customers that choose to use it. It's basically an RPM hold. You can kind of set what RPM you want the engine to hold at. With the trim assist feature in surf boats, make sure you disengage trim assist when you are surfing. This trim assist feature can interfere with the outdrive if you're surfing at a certain speed. To the right of the throttle is a Volvo Penta EVC gauge. This gauge is going to display all the information that we saw up on the Garmin glass cockpit on the gate cockpit on the